Hmm, I don't recall MJ wearing this particular outfit. Let me know. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I love finding affordable ways to DIY a variety of things. Money can't buy everything, except maybe figures. I love collecting figures and recreating iconic scenes. Every figure deserves to shine on my display. So every week, I ask myself the same question and answer it by creating something I'm proud of. Join my weekly adventure by subscribing to my channel. Leave your feedback and suggestions down below. I often get inspired by your comments, and I hope I can inspire you too. Last week, I fixed the integrated Spider-Man suit from No Way Home. Finally, it's now my favorite MCU Spider-Man suit. Check that video out if you haven't already. Today, I'm gonna customize this Michelle Jones figure. I really enjoy the dynamic between Tom Holland's Peter Parker and Zendaya's MJ. They have really great chemistry with each other, especially in Far From Home and No Way Home. This figure came with two different heads. They both look pretty good. I like that they provided a ponytail version because this will make posing easier. But I'm not feeling this outfit. I want to modify it to recreate her actual look in the movies. So, let's, let's deconstruct, deconstruct this, this figure. figure. This outfit of MJ isn't that interesting. Out of all three Spider-Man movies, my favorite MJ look is this one from the end of Far From Home when she was swinging around New York with Spider-Man. This is also the outfit she wore when Spider-Man's identity got exposed at the end of Far From Home and the beginning of No Way Home. I really like the black and white look. I thought it made the outfit more memorable. Or maybe it's because I watched the No Way Home trailer way too many times. Anyway, another reason why I like this outfit is because MJ and Peter were at their happiest during this period. Luckily, the figure is already wearing similar clothing. All I have to do is change its colors. Make the jacket black, the t-shirt white, add the Dahlia necklace, and add the t-shirt design. Okay, that's gonna be a challenge, but I like a good challenge. So, can I make it? Before I start painting, I've already removed the jacket off camera. This will make painting her shirt easier. It's still tough because I'll need to fully cover up the original black color, and I'm trying to keep the paint as thin as possible to minimize the paint from rubbing against itself. The t-shirt looks pretty white after a few thin coats, so I'm going to apply a layer of matte varnish to protect the shirt from minor scratches. This will also prevent the paint from being scratched out by my pencil. Now this is probably the biggest obstacle I gotta overcome. If I can get the t-shirt to look right, then the rest will be easy. But if I can't, then I'll cry in the corner. Okay, Ken, you can do it. I'm gonna map out the design first. Gotta make sure everything fits on the body. I won't be able to paint the actual design in details, so I'm gonna focus more on getting the shapes and tones right. Ta-da! I did it. Forgive me, I had to do this off screen. It was incredibly difficult because I only had one chance to get it right. I used my very fine brush to add in the design, slowly refining the shapes and building up the intensity. It's less about getting the design to look real, but more about getting the tones and the shapes correct. For example, the darkest areas of the design are the hair and the two bottom corners, so I'm going to make sure those areas are black black, and then I painted everything else in relation to those areas. The final design looks great from afar, but it's actually an abstract blob of blacks once you take a closer look. Don't judge. And now I just gotta seal the beautiful design in with another layer of matte varnish. I'm not painting this again. This is the best it's gonna get. Okay, now that I've got the most challenging part figured out, I just gotta make her jacket black. Everything feels so much easier now. <laughs> I'm also gonna paint her pants black. To deepen the color and mattify the texture, and of course, can't forget the actual jacket or vest. Originally, I kept the gold zipper because I liked the paint they used, but I ended up painting over it to make it more screen accurate. Before I put the jacket back on, though, I'm gonna apply a coat of matte varnish over everything. I 
also added in some white lines on the jacket to mimic the look from the movie. These lines aren't that great, but it's okay. It'll be fine once everything comes together. Hopefully. Ta da! Look at that! Everything's going well. At a distance. Now, onto the heads. Honestly, I think they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them at all. But I'm still gonna try to see if I can improve them. First, I wanna add more dimension to the face by adding in some highlights and shadows. I'm also trying to shrink her forehead. Cause Sandea has a relatively small forehead. And the hair. MJ has dark brown hair. And her hair gives off this warm golden shine in the sun. Now this is gonna be very hard to imitate. So I'm gonna brighten her hair a bit and make it more of a lighter brown instead. Here's the painted head. I don't know if it's better. So let's compare. Ooh. I like that there's more dimension to the overall head now. Now let me do the same to the other head. I don't usually talk about the brand of the paint I'm using because I'm using dollar store acrylic paint. Most of the time, I'm able to get the paint to work the way I want them to. But in this case, I recommend using paint that blends smoother. It looks a bit patchy up close. And I didn't want to continue working on it because it will just get more and more difficult to fix. And here's the finished figure. Everything looks... Wait! Those shoes are bothering me. She was wearing Converse in the movie, and those are clearly not Converse. The issue is that I can't paint them to make them look like Converse because the shape is completely different. So instead, I'm gonna swap the legs all together. Ta-da! That's much better! Any guesses on who I stole these legs from? you get a star if you get it right. Oh, I also added the Dahlia necklace. It's made out of air dry clay. It looks chunky here, but in reality, it's really, really tiny. I couldn't make it any smaller without having it crack on me. I really like this version of MJ so much more. Even though the details don't look that good up close, they look great as a whole. What do you think? Do you like what I've done? Let me know down below. Do you prefer this look for MJ? Here's the close-up again with her hair down. The paint looks less patchy at this distance. Whew. Actually, it doesn't look as bad as I thought once everything is put together. You know, I just have to squint a little and the patchiness goes away. Actually, no. I'm pretty proud of this custom. It's not my best work, but normally I only alter the colors here and there. This time, I had to completely change the look of MJ and I think the final overall presentation is pretty spot on. I could have painted the necklace on, but I wanted it more 3D, because I love 3D things. The t-shirt design actually turned out way better than I expected. I was kinda expecting it to fail, and I would have just kept the shirt white. I'm glad I got it to look somewhat screen accurate. Now let's take some photos. Ah, MJ looks great in this outfit. I personally like the ponytail look more, but she did have her hair down when she wore this outfit in the movie. Her expressions are also kind of funny. She's either super serious with her hair down, or she's super excited with the ponytail. It doesn't help that this figure also comes with some jazz hands, so she looks like she's casting magic spells all the time. Now I can't just end the video without her and Spider-Man. What I like about these photos is that even though MJ has no superpower, she doesn't look weak next to Spider-Man. They also got the height difference correct. MJ is taller than Peter, and it's nice to see that reflected on the figures too. Hmm, something looks off with the integrated suit. Probably because they were never in the same scene together with these outfits on. But they are a cute couple. Okay, the Far From Home suit definitely looks better with MJ. They just have this chemistry with each other. I love how dynamic they look. It's like they're meant to be displayed together. Hmm. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a fun one for me. Give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay inspired and I'll see you next week.
I can make it, so can you. Hey, you can now support me on Patreon. I post quite regularly there, from behind-the-scenes updates to sneak peeks to video breakdowns. Top tier members will receive a DIY 3D mini poster every month. This month's mini poster features Peter Parker, inspired by the crying scene in No Way Home. These mini posters look great by themselves, but even cooler next to other mini posters. I love making things, and this is my way to thank my supporters. The link to my Patreon is in the description box down below.